And welcome back, everybody, to Let's Play Banjo and Kazooie. The last episode, we went through Guntilda's Lair and we got here to Mumbo's Mountain and we got everything in the mountain. We got all 10 jiggies and 100 notes in there and we got all the new moves with Talentrot being probably my favorite ability that Banjo has. <laughs> Talentrot makes it so you can just walk a lot faster and <laughs> it's so much easier. And we learned how to, you know, shoot eggs out of her mouth, you know, poop it out, and do do stuff like that, and, you know, just to push the Y button to, uh, crouch on the Y button to shoot eggs. Yeah, that's pretty much all we learned in the last episode, and we came up here, and we unlocked the first note door. We needed, I think, 50 in order to come in here, and today's episode, we're going to continue on through Gruntilda's Lair. That door was easy you got past, unfortunately. You're first and last! Of course, Gruntilda. Of course. Now, there's a couple pathways we can go. Uh, first and foremost, there's our next uh, painting that we have to do for the jigsaw puzzle. But before we do that, there's a character right here. We talk to her. She says, hello there, young ones. I'm Gruntilda. Gruntilda's nicer sister. I've crept down here to help you defeat the old hag. It's about time she was taught a lesson. I know all of Grunty's disgusting secrets, and I'll tell you that three of them every time you find me. Remember them well, young ones, as they will help you avoid a fiery fate. Press X if you'd like to hear them. Sure, let's go ahead and listen to them. <laughs> Grunty brushes her rotten teeth with salted slug flavored toothpaste. Ew. She also washes her hair with engine oil. Yuck! Yeah, that's kind of slimy. And she gets her clothes from Saggy Maggie's Boutique. Monsters chase you, they're a hounding. Then you'll get a Grunty pounding. <laughs> yeah, Grunty kind of just taunts you the whole time you're in, in her lair. But this character, Gruntilda, she tells you three facts about Gruntilda. And... It, you'd be best to remember these because <laughs> late in the game we're gonna have to know some of these so I'll be showing off whenever we can find a Bruntilda in the area and I'll go ahead and get those secrets I mean it'll be easy for me to remember because I got video of it so yeah it'd be best to remember that she'll she'll always be in the areas and she'll tell you the, the facts again if you ask her so just be sure that you remember that, that that's there so Alright, so our next objective, we can go up to, up there with Talon Trot, but we're going to come over here. We're going to go ahead and you, unlock tr the next world. Let's go ahead and push. It says, to remove pieces that you have already put down, move the right stick down. But once the picture is complete, all the pieces are stuffed there permanently. Now, I don't see why you would need to take pieces out. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of the jigsaw puzzle. But once we do that, we unlock the next world, Treasure Trove Cove, which is a kind of like a beach level, which we're, it's probably one of my favorite worlds in this game, to be perfectly honest. Now, before we go further on up there, there is a pathway down here. We come over here and talk to this ding pod, or whatever his name is. We've activated Magic Cauldron. Find two of the same color to create a shortcut. Yeah, so... You need to go find all these pots around Gruntilda's lair, and that just makes it easier for you to travel. So, yeah, you could use these as shortcuts. There's a Mumbo token behind them, too, so might as well go ahead and grab it. Now, there's another thing right here. We can't use this just yet. So this is a Kazooie Shock Jump Disc. Find me, and I'll teach, tell you how to use that move. Yeah, so pretty much we're going to have to just ignore it for right now. We keep going up here. We're coming in this way. There's another pathway. We can go through that pipe there. And actually, if you push Y up here, there's another pathway on the top of that up there. We can go up that way, but we're not going to do that. And uh, best to kind of just ignore it for right now. I can kill this dude. <laughs> get the, get out of here. There's also another note door up here. You need 180 notes to unlock it, so we're going to ignore that for right now. And if you jump down here, there's a lake down here. We can kind of go down here, kind of swim down this way. 
and there's actually a I mean it's this is for something later but we can activate something here while we're here if I can remember it's here I think there's something else here no I think this is just another thing this is another painting as you can see for another world but this is like the last world in the game so you can't really do that for right now there's also Brentelda right here but I'll go ahead and talk to her later it's not really vital we talk to her right now <laughs> we'll do that when we when we actually have to come to this area proper just remember that 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 area is here because we're gonna be coming back to it very late in the game we just climb up the way and swim up here and our last option is to go down this way this is actually the way we need to go it's right here in the beach area that's where treasure trove cove is there's the entrance to the world and in order to get into it you have to use the backflip move in order to jump right into the treasure chest and I want to welcome you guys to treasure trove cove I love this level this level is so fun ahoy there there be treasure tro this be treasure trove cove there are be two new moves for you to find so there's two new moves we need to learn in this world and we also have you know crabs so I'm gonna go ahead and here and just bonk them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just knock them over and then you can ground pound them. Immediately right here, there's a Jinjo right underneath our area here. But as soon as you enter the water, we're going to introduce to another character. This is Snackers. And he likes to bite you. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite, well, one of my wife's favorite characters in the game is Snackers. Cheese and crackers, I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, Snackers is kind of, uh, the, the, the hazard of the water, the beach, is, uh, if you go in the water, Snackers immediately starts attacking you, and he has really kind of interesting lines, and <laughs> I love Snackers, he's so funny, though, but yeah, he'll say stuff like, cheese and crackers, I'll be right there, and then he says, wee, I'm a red feather, I'll help Kazooie, Kazooie fly when she learns that move, so yeah, that's pretty much that one in a nutshell, we're gonna go and learn how to do uh, flying in this level to be perfectly honest there is a bomb right there but it'd be best to kind of just a well he's gonna chase me I think you can take him out with an egg or just yeah he's just gonna stay he's stuck here can you take him out with an egg no oh, wait where's my egg can I get on the same level field as you yeah you can blow him up with an e with an eggs um, this sandcastle here, we're gonna have to go and do here in a second, but we don't, we can't, uh, go inside the sandcastle because, well, there's water's in the way. I'm gonna try to grab these notes here. And there's actually a couple other things in this world that, this world's actually gonna be, gonna be a world that we come back to quite often. You'll understand why here. There's an, also an, uh, uh, island over there that says, I think it says Shark Food Island. It's actually sunk in the water there. Uh, there's actually something kind of unique with that island that we will be coming back to much later in the game, probably like in a bonus video or something like that. There's going to be clams. <laughs> this rat -a tat tat rap that guy. I always just call the move rat -a tat tap, but it's actually rat -a tat rap. So don't mind me if I actually call it that by accident. We jump up here. We can talk to Mr. Mr. Mole here. Mr. Mr. Bottles says, you'll reach new heights with my shock jump spring. Does Kazooie do it? My legs are tired. Don't worry, the turkey does all the work. Simply stand on shock jump disc, then press and hold A. So yeah, as soon as we do that, as soon as we find these, and hold the A button, and we get a giant jump with it. So we can like jump really high with this, and you can kind of go the distance with all this area here. Uh, let's go ahead and try using them out real quick. Go ahead and use the jump jump. And you can actually use this to your advantage here. As I as I demonstrated with that jump. You can you go a little bit forward when you when you uh, hold the A button. Like jump forward if you hold forward. So you can kinda like use this as a movement option to jump into the area you want to go in. You can kinda make your like your jumps a little bit easier that way. Go ahead and grab all these here, and there's a Jinjo right there, so let's go ahead and get him. That's our second Jinjo. And there's more crabs and some more notes. Go ahead and 
ground pound him. I'm gonna save all the honeycomb pieces if I can. I just fell off. Dang it. <laughs> That's gonna be one thing in particular with this game you'll see me do, is I'll sometimes fall off, because as well as this game's platforming is, the controls can kind of get a little slippery, like, uh, just the physics in general are just a little slippery sometimes, so you'll you'll notice that I, if I'm close to an edge, sometimes I'll just careen off the edge there. I don't mean to do it, it's just it just happens. I'm going to be showing you guys another trick that I do believe it's like in the... It's in this version of the game, but it's also in the N64 version. If you're... You do take fall damage in this game. Uh, you will... If you fall a great height, if you climb like this ledge here and you fall a great height, you will take damage when you hit the ground. But you can avoid this by simply ground pounding the move. And while you're in the animation, like when you, you come out of your ground pound... If you fall off the edge while you're in that animation, you will not take any fall damage. So if you need to get down and you want to, you know, not get hurt for whatever the reason, do that. And that actually makes your life a lot simpler. So just being sure to do that. I'll grab these notes here on the shock path here. Okay, there we go. Got 18 notes. And you guys probably saw that I was there was a jiggy up here and you probably were screaming. I was like, Matthew, get that jiggy. Stop trying to explain things. Get the Jiggy. I wanted to get the notes first. I'm sorry. The Jiggy can wait. There's ten of them. <laughs> Here's our first Jiggy. <laughs> uh-huh. And then, actually, before we go further on down the way, as you guys can see, I can probably go down that way, there is actually something I wanted to do. We saw that sandcastle that I mentioned earlier. We're going to actually go investigate that sandcastle. What you need to do is you need to jump down here, and there's a little pail right here. It says, be leaky, no good for water, can bear block hole with pebble. So what you can do is just turn around, and just not jump, push. I always get Xbox and Nintendo controllers confused. A button's on the on the bottom, not not the side. We're just gonna have to go ahead and poop in his le in his uh in the in the in leaky here. Just gonna go ahead and poop some eggs in them. Cause leaky patched up now. Empty water for bear. As soon as you do that, the water that blocked the sandcastle is right here. Now we can go inside the sandcastle. And if the camera will cooperate with me, to stop being buggy for a moment. All right, let's go ahead and go inside the sandcastle and get our prize here. We go in here. He says, "Hey, furball, you're looking wise. Solve my puzzle." And win a prize! Wait, man, everybody rhymes in this this freaking world here. Okay, so there's some notes right here. Let's go make sure to grab these. These are really, if you're not really paying attention, these are notes that you could really easily miss. Okay, so the puzzle here is we have to ground pound all these uh, keypads here. But the thing is, so you probably wonder, well, what do I ground pound? Oh, it's up on the wall here. It's Banjo-Kazooie. Just go ahead and spell out the word Banjo-Kazooie. Ground pound this. And you only got 100 seconds to do so, so be sure, be quick. And you need to find a J, wherever the J is. Where's J? Where's J? Where's J? It's up in the corner. There you go. Oh, 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 righty. Banjo Kazooie. Okay, K. Where's K? I think I saw K somewhere. There it is. A. And Z over here. O lots of O's. Need another O. Right here. I need the I. And then need the E. There we go. Oh. There we go. <laughs> the gate opens to reveal your prize. But first, I'll cut you down to size. <laughs> Are you sure about that, Mr. Crab? There we go, just get him, just, just squeak you out of there. As soon as we do that, we backflip into it and got our second Jiggy! Yeah! Now, the worlds are going to get a little bit longer. It's uh, As you guys can see, the, the length of the worlds it gets a little bit bigger than Munbo's Mountain. So, these episodes might be cut up in a couple episodes. So, just be sure, be, if, if I end the episode abruptly, that's probably why I'm just cutting them up into different episodes. But yeah... This sandcastle that we just were in, 
we're going to be coming back to the sandcastle quite a bit in this game. And that's because this is where you essentially you uh, put in your cheat codes or any codes that you get in-game and, and to put into this game. So just be sure for, to remember that this sandcastle exists. We're going to be coming into Treasure Crow Cove for quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and bonk you out of here. And there is a lone honeycomb piece out there, but as I, I mentioned before, Snackers is waiting for us. So we got to be careful. We want to swim out of there. We got to be very quick. Be sure to use your uh, effective use your d double jump. Yippee, a snacker gets a bigger prize, too. And there we go. Got our second, our third honeycomb piece for this one. Uh, Snackers will just stay there if you're on land. Then he'll disappear and respawn. So there we go. Ah, cheese and crackers. Just wait right there. <laughs> That's my wife's favorite line from Snackers. She likes Snackers so much. It's... Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. So just be careful of snackers whenever you get in the water. Alright, so now that we've done that, we can go down this way here. These treasure chests are kind of mean. They've got teeth on the side here. So whenever you do the backflip move, be sure to not touch the teeth. And as soon as you come in here, there's going to be some notes inside the treasure chest. Like I said, just be be mindful when you jump out of the jump in and out of the box. Don't hit the sides because you'll take damage. Jump inside. We got some feathers. I'm gonna be using these feathers here in a little bit. Okay, jump up this way. There we go. And then we can go keep going this this way. I love the music of Treasure Cove Co. too. It's like my like one of my favorite soundtrack music pieces on the soundtrack. Grant Kirkcope did a really fantastic job with the soundtrack of Banjo Kazooie. It's one of my favorite soundtracks. Always makes me happy here in the banjo music. All right, so this we've got a problem here. We got another move that we need to use, and that's with this uh, flight pad here. This is a flying disc. But you'll have to find my Mount Molehill before you can use it. Well, actually, let's go and find that. So that way we can get that out of here. It's over here, and it's over here by the pirate ship. We probably saw you probably saw in the distance over there. Right here. Let's go ahead and kill that clam. And let's climb the tree because there's notes in there. Always want to grab the notes. Make sure you always grab the notes. They're like the main collectible in this game. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say main collectible. Jiggies are more important than them. Alright, let's go ahead and grab these notes here. Climb the mast here. You can use Talon Trot to get this. And there's another molehill. But first, notes. <laughs> Must collect music notes. All right, let's go ahead and listen to bottles here. This is your big chance, Chicken Legs. It's time for you to fly. At last, it better be easy, boggies, bog eyes. Simple enough even for you, Bird Brain. Just stand on a flying disc and press A. Here's 25 red feathers to help you into the into the air. See you. Nice going. You've learned all the Co's new moves. All right, that's cool. So now we learned how to fly. But we're going to go do that here in just a second. Let's just climb this mast and get a third Jinjo. Yay! But this is how you use it. You go on the fly pad and push A. As soon as you do so, you're flying! To fly higher, you'll need to eat some red feathers. Press A to use one. But remember that Beaky can only carry 50 of them. You also can turn sharply in the air by pressing the right or left bumper. So you can kind of use the use this as a sharp turn. Use the right and left bumper to kind of sharp turn around the area here. So let's go up here to this uh, treasure chest. And then ground pound inside. And there's a jiggy inside the treasure chest. And the camera's just having a field day with that one. That golden treasure was for me. Now harder, still the game will be. <laughs> All right, so there's some more business we have down here at the... They see what I was talking about with the fall damage. Yeah, I, I kind of fell down a little bit too far down. 
there is some more business we can do here at the treasure, at the, the pirate ship. But let's grab these notes first. Because I get quite easily distracted with these dang notes. If they're there, I'm like, I gotta grab them. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk to the captain on this ship. If the camera will just work with me today. That's not, not wanting to work too well. Let's talk to Mr. Captain here. Oh, wait there, I'm Captain Blubber, and I lost the treasure without me ship crashed. Well, go find it then, Blubber Guts. Or, but I can't swim. Can you help me, head old sea dog? Sure, we'll find it for you. Alright, so we gotta go help him find his treasure. His treasure is right here, inside the hole right here. You just go ahead and ground pound into it, and you fall right inside. You come into the water here. You'll notice there's, there's some gold at the bottom. That's on the other side, by the way. We come down here and swim ever so slightly. We get these notes here. And a mumbo token. Now, mumbo won't be on every world, but uh, you still want to collect a bunch of mumbo tokens because the worlds that he does, he gets a little bit more expensive. Hey there, I'm Blubber's treasure. I kind of figured that's why it's all the gold bars. As soon as we grab that one, we're going to jump right back in here. We come over here. We're going to go ahead and toss this over here. There you go, buddy. All right, that'd be half of me gold. All right, let's go find the other one. We come down here. There is a open in the hole right there in this little pond here. So we're just going to go ahead and swim up into the, the hole here and grab these notes. And swim and grab his grab his treasure. There we go. Got got his other half of his treasure. There we go. Get out of here. Get out of here. Swimming controls is kind of a little bit sometimes a little bit wonky, so I try to make sure I'm positioned the right way whenever I'm moving around in the water. All right. Let me go ahead and give you back your other gold. There you go, buddy. Me treasure! Thank ye me, hearties! Take this reward! I'm off to spin, spin, spin! Don't spend it all in one place. I don't know if gold bars should be burning a hole in the pocket, because you probably can't even fit in your pocket. <laughs> Alright, let's grab this jiggy. But I know what is gold! It's a jiggy! 